She's not up here. Yet. Somebody loves you, Shelly. Brittany. Shelby. That's the second time I've done that. Oh. All right. So, uh, can you guys all hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah? No. Yes, we can. Shut up. You can make the mic kind of hot. Yeah, there you go. I'll just kind of hold it down here. All right. So, Shelby, I kind of gave away your name already. Um, but how old are you, and uh, what, and um, how long have you been in Heritage? I'm 17, and I've been in Heritage for about three to four months. Okay, cool. How many of you guys have gotten to know Shelby during the time? Yeah, Shelby. Uh, she's kind of a cool chick, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Shelby, I don't know too much about your family. Would you mind sharing a little bit about your family and maybe what they're like? Okay, well, I live with my mom, my stepdad, my grandma, and my stepsister with her two kids. Wow, that's a pretty packed house. Yeah, it's a pretty big house. It's kind of like a corner, so. So. so you take the house, let them have the corner? Yeah. <laughs> <Something> <laughs> like that. And, uh, so you mentioned sisters or stepsisters? She's my stepsister. I have two stepsisters. Okay. I have one that I live with. Okay, so the one that you don't get along with doesn't live with you guys. Correct. Okay, so you made that decision that she would no longer live with you guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> you cannot live with us. How many of you guys do that with your siblings? Yes. I do. That was a rhetorical question. You weren't supposed to really answer that. Now you guys are jerks. They are case. Well, that's kind of cool. So the one that you do live with, you get along with, and you mentioned that she has two really young kids, huh? And how old? How old are they? They're two and one. Wow. And, and you also help out a lot with them, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. Wow. So that must be a real blessing for her to have someone, you know, in the family who's willing to help. Yeah, we all kind of pitch in. That's cool. Right on. Um, and what grade are you in? I'm a senior. You're a senior. So this is your last year. How are you feeling about that? Kind of excited and kind of bittersweet. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's most exciting about it, you think? The new adventure. Now that you'll be free and kind of off to college and stuff. No. <laughs> no, I'm not, not like, excited about college. Okay, never mind then. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> Speaking of school, uh, what are some of your favorite things about school? I like English the best. It's funny. Okay. You speak it pretty well. <laughs> Most of the time. Can you read it too? Most of the time. That's good. That's good. Well, what do you like about English? It's like evolved and progressed. Yeah. Okay. No, I've heard people say that Shakespeare didn't really write this no, stuff. I don't really hear that. Has anyone else heard that? No. No? No, no I, didn't, I haven't either. I just made it up. I did. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyone else like English? No. I like Shakespeare. I speak it. Why don't I learn it? Wait, oh, I do. Yeah. I swear to God. How many of you have never heard of Shakespeare? You should be ashamed. I feel very Okay. <laughs> so, Shelby, when you're not in school, what are some things that you enjoy doing for fun? Um, hanging out with my best friends, Kaylin and Brittany. Brittany, who's here. Um, I know Kaylin's typically here, too. Kaylin. Kaylin's typically here. What is with me, with me and names today? <laughs> okay. So what do you guys like to do when you're hanging out? <laughs> Do I even want to know? We typically embarrass ourselves in public. Do you find that? Do you find that takes a lot of effort? No, or? no. <laughs> not at all. We're pretty embarrassing. That's okay. So it's it's it comes naturally to you. Pretty much. Oh, that's a gift. <laughs> all right, and um, you know. Obviously, one of the reasons why I asked you to share a little bit about yourself was because, you know, I've just been really encouraged. I mean, I've known you for several years, actually quite a few years now, right? And, uh, but it's been neat to get to know you in more of an intimate context, being here at Heritage and also being in the real life group. And, you know, i got to say, I've just been really encouraged to hear about the different ways that Jesus has been working in and through your life. How you've really allowed that to happen. So, thank you.
Thank you for being an encouragement to me. And, um, and that's why, it's obviously why I wanted you to share a bit about yourself and your journey with Jesus. But before you get into what Jesus has done in your life, um, how would you characterize the way that you were before you met Jesus? It's so simple, it's not always that easy to do, is it? 
So why do you think it's so difficult to, to be a light for Jesus or to share his love with people if it can be so simple? For me, I think it's definitely society. I feel like society um, portrays Jesus as this, this fun sucker, like sets all these rules that we can't do all these things when the world says there's so much fun, like a, bu like a bunch of the friends at school are like a whole bunch of partiers and they do all these like sinful things and they want to do all these sinful things because they're thinking I'm having, having so much fun. And then I talk to them about Jesus and then they're like, oh, that's the fun sucker, I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> and so it's really hard, like, oh, okay, well, we won't talk about that because you don't want to make them uncomfortable and then you become uncomfortable and it's just really awkward. Mm. Yeah. You know, there is often this false perception of what Christians are like, right? Mm -hmm. Or even what Jesus is like. Um, I remember I was at Fresh and Easy the other day, and I was getting some coffee over there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else in shop at Fresh and Easy? <laughs> Walmart. Oh, whatever. Anyways. Target. Anyway, so I was there getting coffee. Hey, this is not a discussion I'm having with you. <laughs> so I was getting coffee there, and um, there, was, um, there was a guy who was, who was next to me. And um, he's probably like 70 or 80 years old or 90 or 20, I don't know, old guy. Anyways, he sees me like this, right? I had my tattoos and stuff. I decided to wear them that day. And, um, and the guy, and, and the old guy, he asked me, hey, so what is that? And I showed him, I was like, oh, this one over here, that's a tiger and a peony and uh, some bamboo. And he goes, oh, yeah, look at this. Check this out. And he like, lifts up his sleeve and it's like this. I don't know what it was. Goes, I got this at the Kansas City State Fair when I was 18. It cost me two dollars. It's like, oh, that's nice. And then he proceeded to just show me all his other tattoos, which were in appropriate places. And uh, and so then we got we got into this conversation. He asked me, so what do you do? Are you a college student? I said, no, I'm not a college student. He goes, well, what do you do? Do you work? And I said, yeah, I work. I'm actually a pastor over here at Heritage Church in Lincoln. You a pastor? What kind of pastor has tattoos? <laughs> and I thought, and I came away from that conversation. I think to myself, wow, like people have this like false sense of what Christians are supposed to be like, right? That we're supposed to dress a certain way or act a certain way or that Jesus should be a certain way. And I love that we can break those molds and those conceptions by simply just doing the simple things, right? By showing people love and compassion. Um, in ways that you demonstrated that were really just rather simple. And so, thanks for sharing that with me. I mean, that was really encouraging. And uh, I know sometimes that can be tough because you're right, society says, no, it's not that way at all. Well, if you can share one last thing, how would you, why, why would you say that you would want to be, that you want to be great for Jesus? Why do you want to be great for Jesus? So make a difference. What kind of difference? sharing that, it got me thinking about my favorite team and yours, the Boston Red Sox. And uh, last year they did horrible. Okay, they were like the worst team in the league. And this is why. Because none of the younger players really grew to take the role of a lot of the older veterans that carried the team through very successful and victorious seasons over teams like the Yankees. And, um, and uh, you know, but the same is true in the church. Right? Just like you were saying. You know, it's easy for us to think, oh, I'm just a student. What difference can I make? But you have to learn to make a difference today if you're going to make a difference for the future. And, um, you know, I know that's my heart as a leader is to empower people like you to do that, to make a difference. Because tomorrow, the church will be you. You guys will be the church of tomorrow. And your children will be the church of the next generation. So you're absolutely right. And I, I'm looking forward to many more people like you adopt that mindset and say, I want to make a difference and to empower others, to inspire and encourage others to make a difference like I do. So that's awesome. Thank you, Shelby. Would you guys give her a big...